Okay, uh, you know, evaluating the film and uh, grading everything, there's a, a lot of opportunities to, to for a game to go either way. And and I know a lot of people think it it comes down to one or two plays, and, and those are the ones that are obvious. But throughout the game, there's there's many opportunities that change the, uh, you know, the outcome of the game, and and we're we're still so close, but yet so far away, and in, in being consistent in everything we do, and in, in our execution and the way we handle things. Well, I hate it any time anybody goes down, you know. I mean, and it's, uh, you know, you, you feel for the kid uh, because of the amount of work that he's put in, and you, you, you also feel for the team because he's been a, a contributor. And it's, uh, you know, but uh, also our guys understand it's part of the game and that uh, somebody's going to have to step up and and uh, make some plays. How hard is Spirits? Spirits, he's good. He's good. He's got a, he's got a great attitude. The opportunities you Weigh any of them more than any others, and if so, which ones maybe? Well, everybody. Uh, I think everybody weighs them more than others because they come in critical situations, you know. But there's so many, there's so many opportunities to build up to those situations, you know. That that uh, if you if we can uh, finish a block here, or uh, you know have just proper alignment on leverage on a uh, receiver here or, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it's, it's – you may not be in that situation. But when it comes down to it, no matter what the situation is, you still got to make the plays. When you lose two games in the fashion that you lost them in, do you worry about your players going forward when you're in a situation like that, a similar situation, a tight game like that going forward? Uh, no, I, I don't really worry about them. I, I, I'm my my deal is that when we talk about that, it's like you know learning from that situation. You know, it's it's so that when you are in that situation again, you can be successful because you've been there before and you know what you have to do. You know what the focus level needs to be, the concentration, the amount of effort that it'll take, all those things. So, I don't I don't I don't really worry about it. I, I think. Uh, the way I look at it is that we're fortunate we've been in those two situations. We didn't, you know, we didn't get it done, but I'll expect us to the next time. When, when Patrice made the interception there in the final minute, the, you guys have the ball at the 39, what was your thought process there? Did you consider well, I, for a field goal at that point? It was, was score and win the game was my pro thought process. Okay. And – I didn't feel like uh, you know when we we didn't we didn't get much out of that series, and I think uh, you know we didn't we didn't get close enough in my opinion where I felt comfortable kicking the field goal at that time. You know if uh, on third down if we'd have picked up two or three more yards then then it would have it, to me it would have been realistic. So it's not a matter of trying to get ten yards to set up the field goal. It's trying to score to win. Yeah, we were trying to score to win. It wasn't just hey let's let's kick a field goal. You know, it was let's let's move the ball, let's move the chains like we're going to do in every situation. It wasn't a, you know, hey, let's just get let's just pick up, you know, a few yards and try to kick a field goal. You were pretty emotional after the Virginia Tech game, specific to the idea of I want these guys. They work hard. I want them to be rewarded, and I want them to understand they are close. But sort of piggybacking on Jonathan's question, I mean, is it do you, do you think they understand that, or is it hard to ha keep them from going into a so no, we're I, slumping, here we go again kind of thing. No, I, I tell you, I, I really think it's 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 more of a uh, they know we're close. They they know we're close and, and you what what I worry about more than anything is is somebody waiting for someone else to make the play, you know, and, and it, it, it needs to be, you know, it's gonna be me that makes this play. You know, I got to want to to be the one. I, I want to be the one. I want the ball in my hands. I want uh, I want the opportunity. I want them to throw it to my guy. You know, uh, that's the mentality that you need when it comes down to a critical situation. Uh, you, you can't look at it any other way. Are you trying to instill that mindset? Is that why you look to score in that situation after Renee's interception? Is that also why you tried a great wider variety of 
different stuff, some of the trickery, the garage throw. The yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to, we're going to, I mean, we're going to play to win. We're going to call to win. We're going to, you know, I mean, we're going to, we, we want our guys to feel confident that, that, that we have confidence in them and, and that we're going to, we're going to go win the game. We're, we're not going to be conservative and, and try to play not to lose. I mean, we're, we're going to play to win. You guys, uh, Nathan went under center three times in the first half for the short yard situations. You guys got first downs all three times. He said after the game that it's something that they, you guys have been doing a little bit more in practice lately. Is that a result of Nathan and, and his skill set, or is it a tweak in your philosophies? It's more of a... Uh, I mean, any of our quarterbacks can go under center. And so uh, it's not really just a skill set for Nathan. And it's – I wouldn't say it's a tweak in my philosophy. I'd say it, it's a, a game plan. I mean, it's – it's you know, we, we see something there that uh, we feel like we can take advantage of. And so, you know, game plan-wise, we do that. I mean, whether we go – I mean, if we do it, we, we're doing it for a purpose, you know. So I, I, I don't – it's not a tweak in my philosophy, I mean, because – I mean, I, I don't I don't know how many times I've gone under center, well, you know, since I've been here. You said here, in the but, past uh, that it's not really who you are as much, and you haven't done it as three, I don't remember, three times in one half of the game before. So I was just curious if it was maybe Nathan or if it was another. Yeah, we had a lot of short yardages in that game yeah. also, you know. So, I mean, and that was kind of the plan and our short yardage, uh, you know, our short yardage plan was going to be we were going to be a little bit more under center. Coach, how do you combat maybe those handful of players who are kind of at that point in the season where, you know, they might be on the fringe of giving up or they might be on the fringe of just maybe losing a little bit of a locker room or whatnot and, and still keeping these guys focused on the fact that you still have X amount of games to play? Yeah, I, I don't – I'll be honest with you. I don't sit around and worry about whether our guys – uh, are going to fight and scratch and claw all the way through every single game. I don't worry about that. We got really good leadership on this football team, and our leadership handles – they handle the team morale. They handle those things. You know, uh, we, 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 what we do is, is put together a game plan that we hope can put our guys in a position to win. And, you know, our guys are going to be ready to play. They're, mentally, they're going to be ready to play, and they're going to play hard. Uh, I don't think there was any question about their effort last, you know, uh, on Saturday night, and they're going to continue to do that. I, 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 I feel very comfortable about that. Following that up, how proud does that make you amidst all the adversity that you guys have been through this season and the off season, and, and, and you still are getting that type of effort from your guys in games like these? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's expected. It's who we are, and so, you know, it, just because you have adversity. I, I guess when you do have adversity, the easy thing would be, you know, to give in. But, uh, you know, if you want to have success or if you want to be successful, you're, you're, that's not the answer. I mean, uh, giving in to anything is not the answer. So, uh, you know, I hope that all of our guys understand that. I, I would think they do going through this program. We've heard you talk many times about ball security at every position. It's a big, big deal. And Michael Carter has had fumbles now where – not just blindside hit, but sees a hit coming and sort of a repeat. He didn't make it back on the field after the last one. Does he have to earn back trust with you at this point in terms of he, he, as good of a player as he is, he's got to hold on to the ball? Well, yeah, I mean, they, they all know the, that the ball is the most important thing. And if you don't take care of the football, you know, there, you, you, you won't be on the field. I mean, somebody else will be out there that's taking care of the football. It's not that Michael has to re-earn my trust or anything like that. I trust Michael Carter. Uh, you know, it's it's more of is it's a point of emphasis. You got to take care of the football, and it doesn't matter what the situation is. Uh, you know, or if it's on the uh, first play of the game or the the last play of the game, you still got to take care of the football. And so, Michael will get it corrected. You know, he'll get it corrected. He's a, he's a good football player, and it, and I promise you, it means it hurts him more than it hurts anybody else out there. It seems like you had a lot of success with Daz Newsom in the first half, first part of the game. And then I don't know if y'all got away from them or. Syracuse took that away. What did you see on tape with, with what happened in the second half with Dad not getting the ball as much as maybe you would like? Uh, he, I don't know. He took one down, I don't know, about 60 yards down about the 10, wasn't it, in the third quarter? Or, wasn't it? And then we scored the next play afterwards. Wow. So, uh, you are you asking? It just seemed like he wasn't getting as many opportunities in the second half as he did in the first half. I don't know if they took it away or maybe, maybe I'm wrong. 
Uh, you had uh, on the one short yardage. I mean, we we handed it to him. You know, I mean, you're they're gonna eventually you're gonna you can't do that every single time. I mean, uh, but uh, uh, you know, I, I would say Daz had a heck of a game, and and the times we got the ball in his hands, he made plays. You know, and so we're always looking for ways to get him the ball. But uh, you know, it, it's not going to be that the the whole game plan is going to be based around tossing him the ball on the perimeter. But I think that part of why he had the success was when we utilized him. You know, uh, I mean, he's uh, he has a chance to make a big play anytime he does, whether you're throwing it to him or you're uh, you're getting it to him in different ways. And so we found different ways to get it to him, uh, what, whether it was the uh, screens the other night, you know, that uh, got him on the perimeter or the, uh, you know, just the tosses and, you know, the jet sweeps in the backfield. Are you using some of kind of how you use Switzer? Is, is that they, that consummate player? In a way, yes. I mean, you you know, you know, it's good that he brought it up like that. I mean, because he he's obviously a, a major threat as a punt returner. And, uh, you know, I just told him the other, yesterday, I said, you're not going to get a whole lot of those opportunities in the future because people are going to, they're not going to do it. And uh, so you got to find other ways to make an impact. And so he's, you know, he's getting better as a as a receiver. He's he's really growing in that role, you know, just as Switz did. Uh, but uh, Daz is doing it probably a little bit earlier. I would imagine that there's probably some growth too emotionally or maturity wise. That he had a bad drop last week. That we, you know Virginia's had to come back the next week and sort of respond to that. I would imagine that's a sign you're kind of looking for from him too. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, I you know I think you. I mean, you know, we hold all these 18, 19-year-old kids to a very high standard, and, and when they make a mistake, it's, you know, it's, uh, I mean, everybody's everybody's uh, pretty distraught, you know, and so, but they're kids, and, and you know, we're going to, we're going to encourage them, and we're going to, we're going to make sure that they, they understand what they need to do to be successful, and, and, you know, yeah, Daz didn't want to drop that ball, but he did, and and uh, he handled everything the right way, and he worked hard all week, and he prepared himself to have a big game, and he did. Larry, has something clicked for Patrice? It seems like the last couple games his play has really gone up. Yeah, I think we're you're seeing that in quite a few guys. I mean, you, you know, he's obviously out on the perimeter, so you see it a little bit more, but I think he's he's got a lot of confidence in what he's doing right now. I really do. I, I think, you know, another guy I'm going to point out that uh, – Two weeks in a row, he's probably played the best he's ever played is Jake Vargas. You know, now you, you guys don't see that because he's in the mix a lot and into what's going on, uh, but he's really played extremely well. You know, just like Patrice, it's probably Patrice's two best games. I mean, so uh, we're, we're starting to see, you know, we're seeing guys make a lot of improvement in a lot of areas, and we just, but we still got to get it, you know, we got to get it done. Jason Sturbridge is another one of those guys. Have, has that rate that he's been growing the last month is that kind of what you guys envisioned when you moved him inside? Yeah, because he's got, you know, he still has all the, the quickness and everything that he needs, and he's, he's uh, you know, he's, he's strong and he's durable, and uh, he's made a lot of plays for us. When you guys moved him inside, was it because there was a need inside? Was he maybe not what you thought he was going to be outside and you could be better suited? For well, we've done, you know, we've done that with quite a few guys that have come in at end and grown them into, uh, into three techniques, and, and uh, you know, he's a guy that, that – it just happened naturally for him as he got here, and he got bigger and, and uh, stronger. And uh, you know, move him inside, and he still has that you know quick step. So we think it's a, an advantage. With the added weight, he hasn't <clears throat> lost any of that quickness. No, time. no, not at all. Coach, comment on uh, Virginia and uh, their program right now, the momentum they have going, uh, especially this season right now. They're contending for the Colts of the division championship. They're going to be a formidable opponent. Yeah, no doubt about it. Broncos done a really good job with these guys. They're playing, uh, you know, really well defensively. And I know it's, uh, it's his defense and, and what he does defensively that uh, creates an issue for teams. And he's done he's done a good job, and they have done a good job. You know, on offense, uh, they got the, the big quarterback that, that uh, you know, likes to run the football and, and the, you know, the receiver number four that they're getting the ball to a lot of different ways. And uh, they're, they're playing hard-nosed physical football. His attitude, you know, he's uh, he's a great kid. He's got a great attitude. He works, you know. I, you knew back then he had a great work ethic, you know. And and uh, 
he walks in here and he has that work ethic still today. And, and you know, I mean, he's, uh, he's got a positive attitude all the time and he just wants to, he wants to do good and he wants the team to do well. If you were to split the last 44 games the program's played, you went 18 and four and it's been followed by five and 17, what's the number one reason things have shifted in the other direction so much? Taking care of the football. Coach, what's your philosophy or what's your stance now on um, announcing when players are out for the season? Kind of the, the ACC. Yeah, so go ahead. I'm the sorry. ACC, you don't have to release the ACC. Yeah, so a guy that goes out for the season like uh, Antoine Branch and uh, now uh, Chas Surratt and uh, who's the third one? Antonio. Who? Miles Wolf. Miles Wolford. Those three guys are out for the season. And I usually don't, I don't announce it until we know for sure that that's when it, you know, so those guys had surgery this past week, and so they're uh, they're out for the season. May I ask what would be the number two reason? What's that? For the, the five and seventeen in the last twenty-two, you said turnovers number one. Number two. You asked me what the number one reason was. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm asking what the number two. Reason. I'm not trying to pick that. I'm just I'm curious what, what what you have to say about it. I I, I don't know the answer to that right now. <laughs>